Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Leilani of Barbados. Today I'd like to talk about referendum, or in layman's terms, changes. Changes we'd like to make. Well, first of all, I'd like to say congratulations to the United Kingdom. I see that you have elected your new Prime Minister, Keir Starmer has been appointed by King Charles as tradition dictates and it is a great day for the United Kingdom. Although it was on July 4th, which was very confusing because that's the Independence Day of the United States. So it's sort of like, well, I guess fireworks across both continents, if you will. I must say King Charles looks very well. He's taking everything in stride and it's wonderful to see that. Anyway, I do know that a lot of people have been goofing on Keir. Sir Keir Starmer, because although he's been knighted and he's this big politician and he won by a landslide, of course, because people stop pretending that they gave a crap about Rishi Sunak. Uh, number 10 press office. Harry, you've got the wrong number. Although I must say that was very cool that Rishi did that goof on Harry. <laughs> I don't really get into UK politics at all, but I just had to come on and talk about this because a lot of people goofed on poor Keir and thought that he was sort of trying to curry favour for lack of a better term, with the Swifties, the Taylor Swift fans. And he went out there and said that he had an epiphany when he went to Taylor Swift concert. And it just really puts things in perspective for us because we realize now that because of the internet, you have to align yourself with internet famous people or people that the internet cares about, such as Taylor Swift, in order to win an election. Yeah, well, I went to the Taylor Swift concert on Friday at Wembley. It was really fantastic. I have to say it was a great concert. And my favourite song is Change. He did it in front of this group of young boys who were kind of looking at it. <laughs> who were kind of looking at him like... And I learned something there. Bruh. I learned that my... <laughs> I'm sorry, but maybe if he had gone in front of a group of girls, you know, maybe it would have worked out better because Taylor Swift's fan base is mostly young girls. Also, it would not have sat very well maybe if he came out in front of girls because that would have been kind of creepo of him. I don't know. I don't know. He did what he had to do and he won. And now this is what I feel. You know when a public figure is going up for election and you say, well, what does he feel about taxes? What does he feel about immigration? My question for Kira would be, what do you feel about stripping Harry and Meghan of their titles? Because that is something that he could start a process of. He could go to Parliament about it. Of course, King Charles would definitely have to be a big part of that as well. And it's all very much a process. But that would be my question for Keir, whether I vote for him or not. I would want to know how he feels about stripping them of their titles. Because a lot of people are very hopeful at the moment that now that there is this new prime minister, by the way, the third prime minister that King Charles has appointed in his less than two years as being king. I mean, that must be some kind of record, right? Anyway, that would be my deciding factor in voting. And it would not be crazy of me to want to know how he feels about that. I know a lot of you might think that would be on the bottom of anybody's list as a prime minister or a president. But you had the illustrious Donald Trump who came out and said point blank that he would be deporting Harry if he found out that Harry lied on his immigration form when he was asked a question about drug use. If they know something about the drugs and if he lied, they'll have to take appropriate action. So he at least acknowledged us, the ones who want to know what are you going to do with Meghan and Harry on this public stage and should they be taken off of it. And you know, one thing about Donald Trump, love him or hate him, he is petty enough <laughs> and people pleasing enough that I think he would actually address Harry. That's what I would like to know about Keir. It would be really good to know if he's going to work on, on that that problem that is the Markles, Harkles, whatever. And as you know, it is a continuing problem. I hate to talk about the Pat Tillman Award as a mother. I think it's atrocious that Pat Tillman's mother has to go to these awards and see Harry receive this award in her son's name. They are polar opposites, Harry and her son. As the petition to prevent Harry from receiving the award reads, Prince Harry, while a former military officer, has been involved in controversies that call into question his suitability to receive an honor of this magnitude. He has faced accusations of endangering his squad 
squadron by publicly revealing military kills. The prince also allegedly targeted his own father, Prince Charles, during a flyover. More recently, his role in the Victus Games, a platform meant to celebrate the resilience and dedication of veterans, has been criticized as self-centered. In contrast, Pat Tillman exemplified duty, honor, and sacrifice. He gave up his successful NFL career to serve his country after the 9-11 attacks and tragically lost his life during his service. Awarding this honor to someone who does not reflect the award's intent diminishes its value and disrespects Tillman's memory. They are polar opposites as soldiers and as men. So for her to go down to this award and watch this happen, and it is going to happen because unless, by the way, between now and July 11th, when Harry is set to receive the award, unless Harry is stripped of his title, there is no way that they're going to rescind him getting this award. He needs to have his title stripped now, sooner rather than later. Some people might think, well, Pat Tillman's mom doesn't really have to go to the award. She could just boycott it and sit it out. Why should she have to do that? This award was made in the honor of of her son's name, she should be able to go to this award and be proud of whoever it was given to. I can't believe she wasn't consulted. I mean, I know she wasn't consulted, but I can't believe the audacity of people to not think it's important to consult her when it's her son's name. I don't know if she's going to appear there. To be honest with you, the more I think about it, the more I think she might just sit it out. Let's just have a quick look because I've been tracking the Pat Tillman Award petition, which is on change.org. I know they changed the goalposts from 50,000 to now 75,000. So just have a look here. Okay, it's at 66,000 now. Yeah, it's been climbing every day. We've all signed it. When are they going to acknowledge it? And are they going to kick themselves afterwards and say, oh my gosh, this was such a disaster. So many people didn't want it and we had to go along with it because of logistics and the fact that, you know, we can't pull back the award from him after he's accepted it because, you know, at the end of the day, Harry did not have to accept this award. Harry just had to say, look, no thank you. I'd like to give it to this gentleman who in Afghanistan did X, Y, Z. In fact, since Harry claims that he's such a feminist, Meghan Markle is proud to call her husband, Prince Harry, a true feminist. Maybe he should give it to a woman soldier and say, you know what? This woman soldier did a really good job out there in Yemen. So let's give it to her. But he hasn't done that. He's never going to do that because he's living in this delusion of he's left the royal family and it was worth it because he's getting awards, he's getting acknowledged for all the things that he would never have been acknowledged for had he stayed there and this is a great time in his life. So he's going to soak up all the glory and stolen valor. But as I said, we can only hope that in the future their titles get stripped or that they get taken off the platform that they're on. Netflix is struggling. Okay, let's go over to Netflix and Megan's cooking show, which is actually going forward it seems like because I think that Netflix has like a quota to fill. Like they have to do a certain amount of stuff to prove that they've tried everything to fulfill the contract with Meghan Markle. And then after they've done that, they can cut her and say, with good reason, we have had to cut you, my darling. You are not performing. We've done this and this and this and then this and nothing has worked. You are more unpopular than ever. So now we can actually cut you with good reason. So I think that's probably what they're working on with Megan. They have to keep trying. And if they have the money to waste and the airtime to waste on proving to her that she's not a good fit for anything out here in this world, then let them do that. But yeah, they're going ahead with this cooking show. And I must say that I am going to fully enjoy critiquing this cooking show because I actually started out with videos, learning how to make videos by cooking and talking. And by doing that, I learned how to film and produce cooking videos. I will have a wonderful time analyzing how she tricked us into believing she's actually making these recipes, all the little tricks they do and edits and everything. I'm going to enjoy thoroughly going through that until it's cancelled, which will probably be very short shortly after it starts. Most people are hate watching her because she's so unwatchable. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of a fun thing to do. I mean, it's comedy gold if you look at it that way. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's not fair that she gets these opportunities and so on, but put all of that aside and just see the comedy in it. I think at this point, it's only going to be short lived like all of her other projects because she's actually very lazy. And that's what people don't really understand because people are saying, you know, how is it possible that she has all this opportunity, staff, personnel, capital, all of these things behind her and still can't succeed? Is it just her personality? Yes, but also that she's not a hard worker. So she doesn't know how to perform and, and, and show up 
and she said, you need to show up. No, you don't just... <laughs> You don't just need to show up. You need to show up with some goods, okay? How about that? There is the Markle curse, of course, which is another factor that maybe Netflix has not calculated into their contract, which is that anything she touches turns shite. And people are bringing out more things that she's cursed. She's cursed David Beckham, they're saying. That's why he's not going to get a knighthood because she had this relationship or friendship with him where she invited David to her wedding. And then after that, told Harry to snub David because she didn't want David and his wife, Victoria Beckham, to get any shine off of them. And then people noticed it and are now talking about it and saying that, you know, she put their cur her curse on them because they were willing to be friends with her and everything like that. Look, it's not that serious. I think that Megan's curse is not that serious. As we can see in the Caribbean, we were all saved. Although Megan said she was coming to the Caribbean next, apparently, or that's what it was alleged, that she was coming to the Caribbean next. And I was fainting away at the thought of it. We had a hurricane instead, <laughs> which was far better. And it didn't turn out to damage us as much as Meghan Markle would have. So there are good things that happen in life. You know, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Her curse cannot always work. But I do think it is very important on a serious note to get them out of the public eye and stop them from influencing uh, people, young people especially. It is, it is borderline abusive at this point that people have to keep seeing them everywhere on an everything. I understand they have contracts that they have to fulfill, but a lot of these contracts are already failed. So why do they keep trying to make money off of them? I feel Hollywood is a very dog eat dog world, but they don't understand that when you're canceled in the sense of Meghan and Harry have canceled themselves, they did it to themselves. That's when you can't really salvage any kind of paycheck out of them. You can't. They can't even do charity. They can't even do charity. They can't even do stuff for free. So how are you going to make money? How are you going to get people to pay money to watch them? But I'll pay it and I'll report on it so you don't have to, okay? <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching me. That is my little kitten calling me. I don't know what he wants now, but he's very clingy and I'll show you more of him later. Thank you so much for watching me. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also press the like button because that really helps the algorithm. If you share this video on all your platforms, anybody talking politics, you know, because obviously this is a political commentating show. I mean, we are here in our professional capacity. So yeah, share it on your Facebooks and your Twitters and everything like that, or X as it's called now. And yeah, just stay amazing. And I love you so much. Okay, love you. Bye. Mm.